What's going on, everybody? Hope you are having a wonderful week so far. Uh, podcast time. Um, this week on the podcast is DJ, producer, record label owner, football club owner, uh, music academy owner, publishing owner, management company owner. This man does everything. Um, and I really, really respect him. I am talking about uh, Mark Knight, uh, most commonly known DJ producer and owner of Tool Room Records. I love this conversation. I've looked up to Mark for a, a long time over the years. I've always followed what he's done and really enjoyed how he's kind of curated his own path in the industry. Um and I think it's really important for people to kind of hear this on how he's done it and also his his attitude on where he sits in the industry is really interesting, but also kind of a breath of fresh air compared to a, a, a lot. So I'm going to stop rambling on. Um, without further ado, Mark Knight. Mr. Mark Knight, what's cooking, man? I'm good, Will. How are you? Yeah, really good, really good. Um, it's 9 a.m. here and I had a mental weekend so I actually got some sleep last night for once in a long time. But um, how's how's your nice. Monday going? It's good. Um, it's been busy, but it's been balanced. I mean, I think that's the the uh, the lesson to be learned from you know coming back post COVID is to kind of correct all the things that we were getting wrong in the first place. Um, have a break and go. Well, I'm not going to come back and do it that way because that wasn't right. So yeah, it's been really you know it's been as busy as I want it to be. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's been good. A nice balance of my, you know, work, family, me time, you know, and all of the above. So, yeah, it's been good. How have you done that? Um, by just planning, just going, well, look, and realising, I think when you get to a point in your career, you realise the most precious commodity you have is time. Yeah. You know, for all the money in the world, if you've got no time, it, it means nothing, you yeah. know, and... I think as long as you, you get to a point in life where you're comfortable with all the things you have mm. um, and you think, well, look, I, you know, I don't need any, I don't need any more. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? This is enough to live a very comfortable uh, life um, and have time. And I think that's the ultimate goal here. You know, I think in life is, is to strike that balance between the two. And um, obviously I have a nine, very, very much a nine to five job in the week as well. So, yeah. I, you know, it, it's two business doesn't really rely on touring i've kind of got the business uh to a point where djing is a bonus now yeah um, amazing and my main income is through the through the label and all the other associated businesses we have so i've always run pretty hard for the last 20 years to to do that because i always wanted that as, a, as an option and, and as an exit strategy as well mm. so um yeah i kind of used covid like, right well look this is where i'm at in life now my biggest priority is my family and my son and being around for him. Yeah. Um, and let's make DJ and work for me and do the things I like and I love and I know are going to be good. Mm. And just enough money to, to do all the things I want to do in life, but not to the point where I miss out in life. Yeah, I think that's a balance that takes a long time for people to realise and to work it out. Does. Right? It does. It does. And I think what, you know, pre-COVID, we were so caught on this hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. Even if you realised it, how do you get off and, and actually activate that as a, as a concept to, uh, to say, right, okay, I'm going to come out of this ridiculous um, process we're in this hamster wheel of like, I must do a thousand gigs a month to be relevant. Yeah. To go, well, I won't <laughs> still be relevant if I do good gigs and I make good music and I do all the right things. Yeah. Um, and I'll have a life. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, as I say, I think the older you get, the more you realise that that's the that's the ultimate win. When people say you made it in life, I think you really make it in life when you strike that balance. I think making it in life isn't necessarily a reflection of your bank balance. It's it's your time against money. Yeah, I think I think it's something that people realise as they start to earn more money as well, right? I think like being able to being lucky enough to earn money doing what we love kind of allows us to then realise like money isn't the be all and end all of of life however no, i feel like it takes a process to get to that point um yeah for sure which, well, don't get me wrong listen I was, I was the most driven person in the world to get when i got to a point i think i, I guess it's easy for me to say when i think no, I, I look back and think well look realistically i've probably taken 
what I do as far as I can, you know what I mean? Because I, of where I sit within the, the kind of field of artists and our scene, I think, I think <laughs> my water bowl just fucking flew like, something across. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm probably taking it as far as I can. I, I'm realistic about you know what I can and can't do, and um, and what's achievable with maintaining the integrity I I, I want to maintain in, in my career. And I think I've kind of got to the pinnacle of what that is. Um, so I guess you need to get there first if you're a driven person. You yeah. need to get to that point to go. Okay, well, this is it. This is, you know, this is as good this is as far as it probably goes. Um, and then you think, well, okay, what's what are all the things I missed out on in the last twenty years? And mm. I think when you have children as well, that becomes, you know, a huge part of it. Um, you have all the money in the world, you can't buy those football matches, but you can't miss those sports days. And you totally, you know, there is no, there's no amount of money that will buy those back. So, um, how yeah, do, how think, do you get to that point? Sorry to butt in, but how do you get to that no, point? Because you're the you're the first person I've ever spoken to in this industry, not in life, but in this industry, where they are like, I don't think I can go any further than where I am at, and I don't necessarily want to go any further, and I feel like I've achieved everything that I wanted to achieve in in my career. Like, that's a pretty liberating say thing to say because i think it's very common in this industry to be like oh, i want more and more and more and i want to do this and i want to achieve that and once i've achieved this i want to achieve that and so on so on like i i want to get into that because that's an amazing thing that you've just said realistically oh i i, I I'm, I'm a realist you know I, I i'm not i don't have delusions of grandeur i never have I'm, i like to think i'm a grounded person you know i think that's that matters more to me than anything that I am the same person I was before I got into this as I am now. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think, I, I just honestly think being objective and looking in at my own career, you know, where I sit and the kind of music I make, um, it isn't mega commercial and it isn't mega underground. It sits somewhere in the middle. And I think that mm. There are limited opportunities in that space because our scene tends to be very polarised and success yeah. comes at either end. And I think where where I sit somewhat in the middle, I think I've probably taken it as far as I can, just being just being a realist, you know. Yeah. The challenge is to maintain that. There comes a new challenge, and that is to maintain that level of success mm. uh, without losing integrity because yeah. that, that's the key word for me, you know. Uh, again, all the money in the world – you can't buy back a legacy. Yeah. You can't. You, and that's really, really important. That means as much to me as anything. You know, what am I going to leave behind? What what statement I am I going to make? And there's been numerous opportunities throughout my career to really sell out and do things. And I just think, nah, man, I never got in it to do yeah. that. You know, I, I don't profess to be the most underground act in the world, but I don't want to sell my soul for money. I just... Mm. Just don't you know if I wanted to do that, I'd go and work at a bank or some shit like that. But um, yeah, I just I think I just a realist and think, look, you know, it, this this is probably about as, as good as it gets, and let's enjoy it. Let, yeah. Let's stop chasing. So let's just let's, let's take stock of the moment and enjoy it. And I've really started to readdress that. I mean, case in point, I like pre-COVID, I think I've been to Croatia, I shit you not, 40 times. <laughs> And I'd never stay there more than one night. I'm like, bro, that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. That's stupid, Mark. This is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Yeah. The next gig you get there, stay. And I did. And I spent three or four days there. And I was like, mm. this is just... And I knew it would be amazing because I've been there so many times. You build up this little picture. But, you know, these are the things that I'm, I'm going to make it work for me now. And I get these opportunities. And I go, okay, what more can this be than just a show? Can I take the family? Can I? What else can I do there? Can I go mm. and see all the things... And mate, that this country or this opportunity it gives me. So um, I guess that just comes with a little bit of experience as well. But um, as I said, I'd like to I think I'm a realist as much as anything. No, I respect that a lot, and I think I think more people in this industry should really talk about that because I think it's very easy to be non-stop and talk about how busy you are and be like that. And realistically, it's like, well, actually, just enjoy what you're doing. Because it's what we've always. How happy are you? Don't worry about it. Does that equal happy? Mm. Look at you know. Does busy equal happy? Uh, And are you fulfilling all the things in life? You know, are you 
all the person you are, are you all the person you were pre going into the music industry and getting yeah. games so are you still that person and i i i, I look i'll rewind back at you and i wasn't i was like hang on mm. a minute I, I, pre music i was doing paid football you know like semi pro i was doing all these things I was, yeah. I was i was really really doing lots of other things and now i'm like this narrow as a mm. person yeah and i'm like fuck that you know i want to be mark knight that's this wide you know mm. not just good at doing music and DJ and that's just one of the that and I, I've kind of really got everything in order now and I do all the things in life that in the right amount I mean probably even less DJ next year yeah. uh, you know I really want to get to the point where I just do one weekend a month that mm. that suits me mm. that suits me I'm happy with the amount of money that generates I'm happy with the time that that generates yeah um, and the opportunities I think that for me is the, is the mecca I, I'm nearly there now I would, have, I would have probably been there just before COVID but COVID come back so I had to do a bit more than not more than I wanted. Yeah, I guess that's true. More than I wanted to do, yeah. you know, more than I, I, I plan to do. Um, but it's been a nice balance this summer, and and, and that's that's the uh, that's the continuing story. That's, that's where I'm going to be. I like that a lot. Do you enjoy DJing still? Love it. Yeah, of course I do. I absolutely yeah. love it. I, I, I love it. I love it to bits. Yeah, I, I really do. I mean, but I love loads of things. You know, yeah. and I think that's what we mustn't lose sight of. You know, we we get so many cases of mental health in our uh, in our industry but we don't address the most basics you know we can become so hell-bent on just being this narrow well yeah. that's going to cause you loads of problems isn't it because you're you're putting all your putting everything stacking everything there well why don't you stack it all across here do you know what i mean and go and, and then you enjoy it more do you know what i mean you really do and uh, and you know djing less you know, as men, I'm enjoying it more because I'm not mm. like, oh god, I've got to go there on Friday. I'm like, <laughs> I'm up for it. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Milan Friday. Let's do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, balance is is the key. No, I like that. Um, I want to talk about what you kind of spoke on a little bit briefly is about setting up the business so that kind of is your main income. Yep. Um, touring records, obviously, if people don't know what your record label is which i'm sure they do um but i like how i was thinking about this earlier and i love how touring it started in 2003 or 2004 yes, 2003 right. um it's a long time 20 years next year that's wild i remember when it started yeah yeah that's, oh me too like yesterday that's I mean, that, again that's another thing it's just like that was like, remember it like yesterday and yeah. that's that's that, that's you know that's just reaffirms how precious time is because it goes in a heartbeat it flies by i remember the first like well not the first but make in the like the second third year i remember the the promos the cd promos on ibiza, in oh, ibiza. <laughs> printing them up and sending them exactly out. <laughs> um that's been a journey like a really long journey, but also a very quick journey, as you said. And you guys have achieved probably from an outsider's point of view, what I feel every record label would want to achieve. You've kind of I turned think, a record label from the beginning to one of the biggest record labels in the industry and up with the majors in to a certain extent with being an indie. What's that process like? I think the most important thing is to know who you are. Yeah. I mean, the biggest accolade you can get in, in music is to say you have a sound. Um, to give you an example, you know, to the lay person, let's say you put the radio on, you heard a record come on, you go, oh, that sounds really Motown. Mm. Now, you don't know why it sounds really Motown, but through the consistency of output and knowing what they are and what they stand for, they create a sound. Yeah. And that's what we've always tried to do at Tour Room is to have a sound. And people write records, oh, I've written this record, sounds very Tour Room. Yeah. Now that's that's the biggest accolade. That's the thing I can walk away and say, we created a sound. Mm. That's what we, we had a sound that's synonymous. And that's what affords us the opportunity to do the academy because people, we don't teach music in, in, in a general way because you can go on YouTube and learn how to make it in music in, you know, through the series of videos. But we teach the sound of making tour room, the, the sound of tour room. So mm. it's a very nuanced, specific thing. And I think we've always try to well, we'll always stay true to that like i said before integrity is, is is a key word here um not only for myself but i extend that through the label maintaining a sound you know it's got a, a fairly wide parameter yeah um but we stick you know and, and it, it does afford, afford us the opportunity to 
to navigate through um, the moment, it being in the moment and sounding relevant, but yet maintaining a consistency of what we're about, you know, not jumping on a bandwagon and go, oh, minimal t- minimal deep text, the thing. Now let's do that. Yeah, yeah. And then next week is electro, and next week is techno. We, we're not about that. We're like, we are who we are. And we, we stick to what we are. We're going to be the best at what we do. Yeah. And if our moment isn't right now, well, we'll it's all right. We'll, you know, we've been here for 20 years. We'll play. We, we understand it's a long game. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden it will come back around and then we'll be right back at the front of the queue because we've maintained what we're about. So how we've got here is through consistency of knowing what we are. Yeah. I think that was when you guys first started. I think honestly, that was the key. What happened with Tool Room is that you were super consistent, and it was one sound, and you yeah. knew what you were gonna get. And I, I obviously over the years, you have to evolve and you have to kind of broaden the parameters to to where you were at the beginning, um, just to reach more people. But I think that's that was the the, the key, and the branding was always on point. Oh, thank you. Compared yeah, to like, like most record labels, you always knew it was a tall room record from the branding and from the sound. Yeah, and that's what we try to maintain. You know, look, we've made mistakes in the past, and sometimes your success creates a problem. You know, you end up becoming so big. Mm. Um, you know, we've still got twenty five staff here now, yeah. uh, and that's a lot of mouths to feed every month, um, and that dictates a degree of success. Yeah. Um, so it's always about find, you know, finding the balance of making, putting out records that have commercial success mm. in terms of making money, but maintain what we're about and upholding our integrity. And that's always a fine line. And sometimes we get it wrong. We deviate a bit too far and we, we know, and in COVID, for example, we had to really migrate to the kind of more commercial end of what we're about because the only kind of medium we have was the radio. Yeah. So we had to, you know, fortunately we were lucky that we could go, okay, well we can still, you know, be this town and it's still saying be related to what we're about as a brand. Um, and we did, and, we, and weirdly enough, we're the best year we ever had in COVID. <laughs> uh, I guess because you know the whole, all the bandwidth wasn't taken up on with events and yeah. other things. People were focused on music, and we had good music, and it was well received. Um, but now we're back to clubs. We're like, look, we really want to get back to the DNA of what we're about, mm. and that's uh, and our club brand. Our our initial motto, our, our strap line was. Um, we wanted to play our records that would get out of jail cards. You know, yeah. when you're playing a gig, oh God, this is not going the way I want it to go. You put one on and you turn the gig back round again. That was, you know, that's what we always strove for. And, um, you know, we are slowly moving back to that. You know, we, we're a fairly big oil tanker now, so it takes a little while to turn the ship around. But, you know, we, we really want to get back into that name, what we've always been about. And um, if it means a financial hit, so what you know as i say our integrity and our legacy means more than the balance sheet Mm. as long as everyone's paid and we look after people here and we all you know come the end of the year whatever the profits are we split between the staff you know i'd rather do that than give it to patent corporation tax so we act on that kind of john lewis model of like it's a family thing here we have a strap line to one family and that's that's not just a a slogan or a marketing statement that it it really is a family and it was always built on a family foundation is you know Mm. initially my dad my brother myself set the label up and we've always had those values as a company so um yeah, that, we, you know we, that's where that's where we're about, and that's where we're at. With your dad being at the at, at the beginning, was there like a family music kind of line, or was it just? Yeah, was I mean, he's still here now. I mean, he's mad. My dad's seventy nine now, and he still he comes in the office two really? or three times. Oh, a lot of times, just to get away from my mum. To be fair, <laughs> um, <laughs> just uh, nagging at him. But um, yeah, look, he's he really adds uh, an interesting dynamic to the business. He always has done. I mean. He uh, was a musician back in the day. He was a drummer. He was in a band and they toured. They were pretty successful. Um, yeah. But, you know, it was never going to support uh, a livelihood full time. So he ended up becoming a bit of an agent and doing mm. bits and bats. Then he went off into marketing and, and a whole di- a different career in business. But he, he kind of understood both facets, you know, how to run a business. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that built a very successful business himself. Um he knew how to, to run a business, but knew enough about the music industry for the two things to, you know, to, to understand both facets of it. So he brings a very interesting dynamic to the business in terms of, um, 
he tends to work on the business and he looks at things because we're so caught up in the detail and we're so close yeah. to things. Sometimes when you're running a business, it's very hard to objectively look at um, strategy and yeah. where you're at because you're so caught up in, right, we need a radio edit for this and mm. those hats are too loud and can you go back, you know, the little who's stuff. on the line up? Yeah. You're so close to the detail that you forget to go, okay, well, what's the three-year plan? What's the five-year plan? Mm. And he's very good at reminding us that and saying, look, this is going on over here. Have you seen this? and this is an opportunity here we should be looking at so it's really good i mean it's it's you know it's it's the stuff of dreams really isn't it to to, to work with your family and do something you love so yeah i'm very blessed to, to be in that position no, i love that what, at one point what point did you have to be like okay this is too big we need staff and to to make tour room what it is today you have to expand there's no there's no physical way you you your brother and your dad could do that by yourself right you have to employ people yeah. so at what well, point is it are you in your career where you're like fuck we need we this is getting somewhere and we need to expand well it wasn't long before we we've always invested in the business always yeah. I mean, for the first three or four years everything i earn um i put in the business so you know whatever i earned at the weekend dj and we put back in the business and then we just all took out as a salary yeah so we split it three ways or four ways and we Within about eight, six months, we took on Owen um, and we've always invested back in the business, back in the mm. business. Um, I mean, for the first 13 years, we didn't make a penny, yeah. we didn't make any money. Everything we have is reinvested back in the business, more staff, more expansion, more growth. Um, because we had a vision of what we wanted the business to be and, and the scale of what it, it needed to be. And we knew that that wasn't possible Um to to do ourselves and i think what we realized and we did at a very early stage was understand whose roles and responsibility you know who, who had what roles and responsibilities you know my brother he always ran the business side of it um and i was always the creative you know he yeah. he at no point never wanted to come in and you know start writing drum grooves and i never wanted to do double taxation for <laughs> fortune so we both you know knew our place and what we were good at so um and we play to our strengths and we always, you know, I always, I, I always use um, football as analogies all the time. So bear with me. There may be a few of these. But it. Um, you know, we always, it was always about building the right team, you know, getting the right 11 players on the pitch. We, we didn't need 11 centre forwards. We didn't need 11 left backs, you know, it's okay. Mm. We want to grow the business. We need a product manager. We need a, a marketing director. We need, sales director you yeah. know and we and we got people in to do that to, so that we brought the right people in to do the right jobs mm. and we always um believed in what we were trying to do as, as a brand and invested back into that yeah i think it's, how important is that though like for a business because i think there's so many people in the music industry that there's it's so hard to to kind of get the business and the, the creative to work as together like, and that's what you need to invest in people. Yeah. People will give, you know, individually you can be good, but as a team, you can be unstoppable. Yeah. And it's about having the right energy and directive to formulate that team and faith in what you're trying to achieve. And that mm. means risk. And that means backing, like I say, for 13 years, I mean, I never took a penny out of this business. We never had any, there was no money to take out of it. Yeah. Now I don't need to DJ, you know, 20 years later, it, that's that's how we, that's where we've got to with it so it you have to have a belief in what you're trying to do and reinvest in that and ha bring people in because otherwise you end up um foregoing the part that you're you know or, or what's the word um not really fulfill it yet not fulfilling your part of the bargain because you know you're too busy doing other things where i'm i'm good at the creative i'm good at the, the strategy and direction of where we want to bring be but yeah, I don't want to run around working out the paying the office bills and the rates and all. We've got people, right people, doing the right things, yeah. you know. Or I don't want to be setting up you know, the live room or, or all these other or the public, you know, sending out pu publishing statements. We've got people to do the right things that, and everyone plays to their strength. And if you do that as a team, if you build the right team, then you know you really can be unstoppable. And that's what we've tried to 
try to do is is to build that and that all credit to everyone here this is you know this is not about i it's always we here and, and it really is a collaborative team effort and we wouldn't be anywhere near where we are without the amazing people that work here yeah um and people i i can't you know tell you how highly i think of everyone here if it's if it's three o'clock in the morning i said right guys i need to run off this report they'd be up they'd be in the office and it'd be done I you know they that. they live and breathe it, and I, you can't buy that kind no. of you, that kind of passion, and that. So we're very fortunate to be surrounded by some incredible people that work here that make us the success that we are. But I think that comes from the top down. I don't think you go into a company as an employee with that mentality. I think that comes from the employers and from the team at the top, and it kind of gets gets flown down to the people right that are new coming into the team so yeah. it, that's that's all credit to you guys at the end of the day well look, i'm the captain do you know what i mean yeah. and i've always got to put a captain performance in yeah you know, if i'm in sao paulo on saturday night the first thing i do i'm back in the office on nine o'clock monday morning no the, 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 that's it yeah. and i'm the first one to put the kettle on always show don't tell and that's yeah. always been the like show bikes, like lead bikes. I'm sure. Look, I can be in Sao Paulo Saturday night planning a gig, but I'm also the first person in the office on Monday morning, first person to put the kettle on. Does anyone want a cup of tea? Lead by example. If you set that tone of energy, desire, then people will follow. They'll go, okay, that's the level of expectation. That's where I need to be. Yeah. And thankfully, we recruited some great people, and, and I have to always lead from the front. It's my job to do it. It's my, I'm the captain of the side, and I've got to play – a captain's role and I, I love that and it's again that's another great challenge in my life is to, to always lead by example and, mm. and I, I try to do that I love that I like that a lot do you enjoy do you enjoy running the label I love it I absolutely love it it sounds I mean, like you are like so passionate about it and to be 20 years in of uh, of doing something and still loving it that much like it's really is pretty nice to hear, if I'm honest. Oh, I couldn't think of, I, I wouldn't know life without it. Um, it's it, it's it's still a buzz every day, you know, when yeah. you're on your laptop and you've got all these different opportunities, things going on, you think, wow, you know, we, we really come from the shed, which we did do to the stars, yeah. you know, it's an incredible journey and I, I, it still inspires me every day and I, I, I love it. As I say, I, I, it'd be an enormous hole in my life. I don't know what I would do without it. Mm, I love that. Um, how, how, what other parts of the, like, I think I know a few of them. I don't know all of them, but I know Tool Room isn't just a record label. Like yep. what other parts of the business are part of Tool Room? Because I, I think what a lot of people don't realize is how much you guys do and how much you can actually do in the music industry that's not necessarily a producer or a DJ or a record label owner like you do a lot of other things that are kind of side businesses or on a huge sure. part of the businesses yeah we do and we have a company called amplified we run a lot of record labels we run saves we run abode kaluki nothing else matters yeah it took a, a whole long list of labels we we are part own and run mm. um we have a publishing company uh, we have an events company. We obviously have the academy, which is a massive part of our business now. Yeah. Um, we've got a huge sample packs business. Um, we have just started making plugins. We did, did my first plugin, which was a which is an interesting journey. Um, uh, and we are constantly evolving, looking at new facets and ways that um, that we can expand the business and, and that, that are related and that, that tell the story of what we're about. So. Mm. Yeah, we're far from just a record label putting out, you know, fifty-two releases a year. We are we are multifaceted in that in, in that respect. Um, oh, we, we've also got other in, owned in-house labels. We run a label called Zero Three, Love Another. Um, oh god, there's a million things we do. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot going on. Is is that a the case? Is that the case of you guys having to have lots of other businesses to make to pay the bills? And or is that a case of you you waking up one morning and going, I want to start an academy. How do we make this pay the bills? Uh, yes, it's more that it, it, it's seeing an opportunity. So there's a hole in the market. There. There's a gap in the market to do something. Now yeah. we have the skill set to pull that off. Let's do it. 
Yeah. Right, let's do it. We're doing it. It's a thing. Um, and we constantly evaluate opportunities and we move things around and uh, and, and try to grow things. I think, um, you know, to, to earn the money we want to earn, I think we do need to be multifaceted. And like I say, we have the skill set to be able to do that. And if mm. we do, well, why not exploit it? Mm. Tour Room Academy. Yes. I've seen that loads. I've seen it grown over over covid especially which i think it must have been a, a good time for for the business to grow it was, um, yeah sure. let's talk about that a little bit the process of setting that up and why and how you set it up well i think we just realized that you know we were getting a lot of feedback initially from producers when we, like initially the the, the 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 i suppose the inspiration we always had inspiration to do something like that, but I suppose the catalyst was we would get, whenever we put out more kind of, um, I guess, music-related techie-type posts on our socials, we get an enormous amount of it interaction. Really? And this kind of community that was building around that. And we thought, well, look, we've already got this warmed up. And, and we knew we had a sound. And we were like, where we want to be different to this, you know, because you can come, there are very, loads of brilliant companies teaching music, point mm, blank, and yeah. so on and so forth. But, but we're, like where we wanted to be different is that we wanted to teach the sound of Tour Room, like mm. how you produce the records that we put out for years and years and years. And this isn't being taught by a another music tutor these yeah. are people who've had bona fide careers within the industry you know mm-hmm. people like Dean Ramirez you know who's legend. a legend in his yeah. own right who's teaching you how to make electronic music and Pete Griffiths who's who was A&I, head of a and I for years and years people who've been at the forefront of signing global hits and making global hits teaching you how to make music yeah that in itself with the USP and we're like well look we can deliver that um it's so much so to the point where now we've actually write our own degree course um, wow. we'll what with water bear so that's been scaled out now and that's doing really well so yeah we're constantly evolving things and, and growing growing the academy it, 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 to the point where we sometimes hard to just keep up with it mm. the scale of it um but you know we have a great relationship with all our artists our roster we, that means a lot to us again the tour and family everyone's involved in that and everyone that it's a kind of win-win for all people get to learn how to make music from as i say people who are bona fide legends or yeah. like bona fide yeah. careers in the industry um, that, that are visual, they can see, and they're teaching you. We get to find new talent because that was the other flip side to it. We, you know, again, going back to the football model, we wanted to copy what football clubs have been doing for years in terms of creating a talent pool mm. internally. Um, we, have, we also have a management company. I should have said that. We have a management company. We look up a lot of artists. Um and it dovetails nicely into that. You know, we find, yeah. find some brilliant new talent. A guy called Fletcher Kerr, we just found out the uh, who, who's a new talent to, who's come through the through the academy. So it follows the model of what football clubs have been doing for years. Go, okay, they, now my son's at a football. He's played for Crystal Palace. He's in that. He's in the football equivalent. Well, we try to, we just say, well, let's, you know, we're mad. I'm a, probably as passionate about football as I am with music. Um and we just said, look, well, I know that industry. I'll come up through that model. I'll come through it myself. Yeah. Let's replicate it within an electronic music. And we found some brilliant talent. People like Weeks and that would come through the academy. Mm. He was just someone to sign up a course, got very, very good. You're very good. Thank you very much. Please sign a contract with us and we'll put your music out and do your publishing. Um, you get, you know, you get straight onto the ladder of a, a top draw label. We find new talent. The whole thing rolls on. Everyone's a winner. Yeah, Ben, I because Ben Remember does quite a lot of your stuff. As well, ben, as well. again, Ben, yeah, Ben next door, in my office, the other side of this wall is, is the academy. Ben, or Ben's in Bristol, and he well, Ben lives near me in the UK. Like, right, he he recently just bought a place in tiny village, like next to the tiny village that I also live in. So that's no way. That's how. Yeah, ben. it's super random as well. Like, you don't you oh, you, you don't just move there. It's like rat. You've got to know it's random as fuck. Um, right but yeah he's it's amazing to see his videos come up it's he's he's Ben's so good, man. He's, he's just got so he's so good at it i mean i can't tell you and pete the two of them i yeah. mean feedback we get from he's just honestly it's unbelievable um because they're so good and they care they genuinely really really care about people's music and career and helping them and um yeah, it, it, it is definitely a win for everyone. We've found some great new talent. People have gone on to have careers, and it's it's what we wanted it to be. 
Now, we've signed some great acts through there for the management company, released their music. It's what, football clubs been, it's what football clubs have been doing for years. Yeah. Was there a point in, uh, in your career where, not as Tour Room, but as Mark Knight, the DJ producer, where it fully kicked off? Like, where you're like, okay, we're, we're, we're going. Yeah, I'd say about 2003 to... It, 2003 2004 the label was starting we just started was getting some traction there's some heat around that do i was doing quite a lot for defective doing a lot of remixes for them we did the strings of life thing record then mm. and and yeah lots of things i was working with martin at the time we had a partnership mk and mtv and it was amazing times and we it, it was through its sheer naivety i think that it was successful we were yeah. like Let's make this record today. All right. Why not? Do it. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. No one's saying no. Let's just do it. And yeah. we we got and very quickly we got a sound. And we just again we just kept that going. We're like, this is what we are, this is what we're good at. Mm. We won't change it. We'll just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And before you knew it, I mean, God, I mean, we were so broke. We were so skinned, man. Honestly, for a year, me and my team, we lived together. We lived by this Chinese. And we'd go down every night and they always have duck left and rice left. And we lived on that. We go, is anything left we can have? We were that fucking skin. Um, and I was duck and rice. And they, if I let any more duck, I'd have had web feet, I think. Um, <laughs> so we survived on that. And then we just got this sound and the label started. And everyone wanted to, you know, wanted a remix. I think one year we did 25 remixes because we needed wow. everything. And it was just great experience. So it was great in one hand, but on the other hand, it just totally killed us because we gave everything we had for, to other people mm. all the ideas we had and then we got we come to the end of it. i remember that year we go right we need to write a record for ourselves and like uh there's nothing in the locker <laughs> We've got nothing left and, and, and we ended up kind of splitting up um but that was the year 2003 to 2004 it really kind of went like that mm. like, oh hang on this is uh this is definitely a thing now and how have you sustained that for so long because that's right. 20 years drive and uh, look two things one as i said before knowing what i am yeah. playing to my strengths knowing what i am being comfortable with what i am mm. that's the foundation of it i'm not chasing a trend i'm not trying to be jamie jones i'm not trying to be david getter okay so let's talk about that because like, that's that that's not learned overnight i think or I is don't it for know, you I, no i just always knew what i was i always yeah. knew be the best version of Mark Knight because yeah. that's all you can be. You know, the minute you try to be something you're not, is 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 rocky is a rocky foundation. Mm. So, I've always sort of understood what I st stood for. You know, and, and that comes from just doing things that I love and not really caring if it fitted in. Going well, this is just the best version of what I can do. Yeah, and I think somewhere out there, someone will like it. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And then you go, well, that's just me. And then people come to you. You don't have to go to them and try and chase things. I was never trying to chase anything. I mean, it's been tough because I've never really been, I was always, I've always had to sort of play second fiddle to whoever was in vogue at the moment throughout my whole career. Yeah. And it's still a thing now. And sometimes it really frustrates me, but I'm happy with where I'm at. And I just always knew what I'm about and I am very, very driven. You know, I'm very, 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 very driven. I, you know, I may not be the most talented person in the room, but I will always be the hardest worker. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. And if something needs to be done and if uh, someone works 23 hours, I'll work 26 and just yeah. win. Yeah. Just yeah. win through sheer hard work. Um, so I think the combination of ridiculous amounts of drive, um, unrelenting energy and, and drive and just knowing what I stood for, mm added up to a 20 long career that's never really had any dips. It's always just sort of gone, gone like that slowly, slowly. It's never been this kind of, whoa, like this. It's always just been like that. And I think that, that breeds longevity. The fact that I'd maybe, I didn't, I wasn't ever the most in vogue person at, the, uh, at a given time. I was yeah. always there or thereabouts, but that meant I could just kept going. You know, I was always, you know, it, 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 in, in that kind of comfortable position where I could just keep evolving and growing my career I, th I, th I also think that in where you sit in the industry where like what you said you're not trying to be super commercial and you're not trying to be super underground there's actually not many people in that pocket that's actually <laughs> the most underground place you can be yeah exactly because you're just doing what you fucking want to do 
And that, and that's what it should be. That's what underground is. Underground isn't a sound. Underground is an ideal. It's it's it's, an, it, it's it's exactly that. It's about being different. Yeah. And it's it's something for me that's it's taken me a while as an artist to get to to understand that. Um, it's only been in the last couple of years. I think twenty twenty eighteen. The end of 2018, I realized like I need to just fucking do what I love to do and not, not necessarily that. do. That's the, why we do music. Yeah, it is, but I think it's very easy g- coming into this career and going, okay, who's the biggest in? Who's the biggest person right now? And who do I like the sound of their music? Okay, I need to then fit on that record label. I need to fit on this record label to get to this, this, and this. Because it, mm. I think I, I think I'd be I think we'd be joking ourselves if, like, we know to make money in this industry you have to do gigs, yeah, to start to start with, yeah, um, yeah for sure. And you, I could release a record label on a nobody record label on a record label that has no power behind it that that can't release records, and it just be lost in the the wilderness yeah. of, of records so it's like okay let's just use touring for example i want a career in music um tour room can make my records sound can can make my records be heard i need to write a record for tour room well see i think that that's i i think it's about just look this is a brilliant record and because it's brilliant it will find a home. Yeah. I mean, it's one approach. When you're trying to shoehorn into things, I suppose I've never really had that issue. Because this is what I was going to bring up. I, I've always liked to own the process. Yeah. 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 Because that's why I set up Tour Room. I have to say initially, oh, I was having all of those problems. I was writing records and then giving it to Record Label and going, I've spent ages crafting this and you just flopped it out. I mean, you literally exactly yeah, run yeah. apart, yeah. let alone a record label. Yeah. yeah. And that was. That was the impetus to start Tour Room. So it was at that point I realised, look, and, and it's the same with everything I, I do in life, I always like to own the process. If mm. I own the process, it's on me. Yeah. The success of it will be determined by my endeavour. Mm-hmm. You know, And that is hard work because that means you've got, to, you've got to think of everything from what kit you're going to use to what is the marketing campaign. Yeah. It's, an, you know, it, it's, but if you're across all of it, it's on your head, be it. Now, mm. and that record will be as successful. You don't go, well, I'm going to pass it to you. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed yeah, please yeah, be yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Fuck yeah. that. No, man. I mean, I, that, that's why I like to own it, own the whole thing. And, and you know, when I start a record, like, it maybe it is calculated, but I think of it, right, well, okay, what's the whole, what's the the journey of this record? What? How is it going to... What first and foremost, what's it going to be? What mm. what kind of record do I want to make? Then how am I going to bring this to market? Who's going to play it? What? And I think about the whole process before I even switch the computer and go, does this idea, from a musical perspective to a, a sales perspective, make sense? If it does, I shall do it. If I don't, I shall not open the computer and I shall do something else today. And and I and that's the approach I take. It's that I always like to be the master of my own destiny. Now, sometimes that has limitations because, you know, you may not be the best, yeah. but at least you're in control of your own destiny. But I, I, I like that. and But I also think I'm just playing devil's advocate But I, because I do the same as you. Like, I, I go into the studio with an idea in my head of what I want to come out of it. I don't just... I, I can't anymore. I can't just go into the studio and jam. That's not me really if i'm honest with you I no I, i've never done that yeah. that's never been a process for me it's just like right I, i've got an idea i mean i always liken this to and the other thing obviously is like construction if you're going to make a house all right you go right okay i've got a set of drawings i'm going to make a bungalow today and it's got one story it's going to ruin it it's four bedrooms i'm going to make this right too many people start with a bungalow and end up with a block of flats yeah i like to go we're going to build a bungalow and we're going to finish. We start the idea as a bungalow and we're going to finish as a bungalow and that's it. Now it might not be the best bungalow in the world, but at least we've set out to achieve what we wanted to achieve. We know there's a, there's a win. There's a point where you go, this is what we set out to do. Mm. Um, and I always approach it in that, in, in that respect so that you don't go from, because then you know where the win is, you know, you know what your idea is and maybe that idea is not the best when you've done it and you've been to go, 
okay, it wasn't as good as I thought that idea. But at least you've executed the idea. Mm. And, and you can actually objectively go, listen back to that piece of music and go, is that as good as I imagine it's been some, a lot of times? It is great. Brilliant, brilliant to market and the way it goes. But there is the occasion where you go, do you know what? I'm going to sit on that. It's about the records I don't put out sometimes. But what I don't do is like a myriad, thousands of records that just throw it around in the ether. I mean, I, I probably have got nothing on my computer that is not released. Yeah. Well, apart from one album. Apart from this left field album, which <laughs> will be the right day when the moment is right. But apart from that, everything I've started, I've put out and finished and ex finished. Mm. But that, that's just me. That's just the way I am. I, I, that's just the way I practice. Whether it's right or wrong, that's just the way that works for me. So, I, I, I'm, I'm the most efficient I can be with my time because I do so many things. I have to approach it in that in that respect. Well, I think that's that's the thing as well, is it kind of going back to the beginning of the conversation of where you were talking about tour room being the nine to five and then DJing is kind of doing what you, what you love. But also people, you have family, you have friends, you have a life on top of that. And I don't know about you, but producing... Producing for me at the beginning of my career was like the be all and end all. Like I produced every single day, like Monday to Sunday, every single day I was writing records. Whether I had a full time job at the time, I was writing records. But it's really interesting how, as my career has developed, it's that's kind of taken a back foot, which is just wild to me because it shouldn't, in the grand scheme of things, because it's the one thing that has got me to where I where I've got to. Um, do you like book out a studio time where I'm like in the studio yeah. and I have to write something? Yeah, I do. And, and so much so, I mean, I've got two doors down, I've got a studio there, but too much, so much so, I've actually, I go and work with uh, James in London because I have to divorce myself and my, my mindset of going, right, if I'm in here and I'll go and go, I'm going to go work on that today. And then every two minutes, I'm like, don't go in, I'm working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but what are we doing about this? <laughs> and especially if you get stuck and say, like, oh, hang on, I'll just do that. Go, okay, I'll get going again. Uh, yeah, uh, could we just film this? I'm like, okay, yeah. or, or could you give me a quote? And it's like, so I have to go, right. Yeah. Not doing music today, not doing touring today. I'm going to go to the studio in town and work on it. And I'm in that headspace and I'm totally focused. And I'll only work for about six hours and then I'll stay right in the zone. I'll go in. And because you're working with someone, you're paying to work with them now I, yeah. I, because it's more efficient. Look, James is way better an engineer than I am. Yeah. Like, I, I'm just, again, who, playing who, to my strength. James, sorry? Yeah, I work with a guy called James Hurt. Okay, um, cool. Who's uh, like one of my best friends yeah. and, and a genius engineer, like the world's fastest. Um, I, at the point sometimes, like, whoa, James, slow down. I can't even keep up with our own, my own idea. <laughs> um, and it, it, it's the most efficient use of my time because – Success begets all these other things that, that that now and then become part of the process. Where you can't, you know, back. Then, I was the same as you every hour, just yeah. going to the computer, making the tune, making another tune. Well, now I, I don't have all that time because mm. it, it's it's morphed into something else, you know, which is going from a hobby to a full time career and all yeah. the other thing and a job and all the other things around it that that make it a job. Um, and then, you know, when you've got staff and all these other things, it, turn, it evolves into this huge thing. So I do literally book days out and go, James, can I come in for a day with you? Yeah. Got, I, I want to get this done. And we'll get it done in a day. If I try and do it on my own, it will take me a week because of all the interruptions and just because he's better at it than I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm a better producer than he is. He's a better engineer. Put us both together. It's magic. And why not? You yeah. know, it's like me picking up the bass and go, I'm going to try and play this. It's just not going <laughs> to happen. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah. It was, so I'd be better. I could get a note out of it, but it'd be better to get a bass player for 150 quid to write a brilliant bass line. So yeah. again, it's all about recognising, realising what bit you're best at and, mm. and invested in yourself. You know, it's worth every penny paying James to work with me to get this movie. And then me spend a whole week. That's not uh, efficient in my time. Totally. You know, yeah. it, it just isn't at this stage of the game. And I, I that, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter to me anymore. I'm way past that now. I have to be if I want to maintain all of these millions of plates that I've got spinning. Well, I think that the, the whole kind of thing of this conversation, the thing isn't the right word, but I can't think of the right word that I'm trying to think of. But like it is get the best people at what they are best at doing. Always. 
Always, always. Yeah. Again, going back to the building, thing, you wouldn't get a plaster in to do the, ele- the electrical work or you wouldn't get a plumber in to put the roof on. Exactly. Get the right people to do the right job and yeah. you'll get the best. Totally. And that, that, that's a cost and investment. That's that, you know, you'll benefit on the amount you invest in yourself. You are a business. You are, a you know, a, an entity and it's, Every business needs investment in itself, mm. whether you're an artist, whether you're a record label, whether you're a plumber. You have to invest back in yourself and you'll see those are the people that kick on and go to the next level, who, people who are prepared to invest back into themselves yeah, with the right people and the right help. Totally. Um, I want to self-indulge a little bit um, and I apologise for this section because you've probably spoken about this for God knows how many years, but Man with the Red Face... Yes. Um, you knew that was coming. Um, how do you feel about it now? Um, how do I feel about it? I, I, I guess I'm pretty proud of it. You know, I, I still play it a lot. I mean, mm. I, I, I think I'd probably be stoned to death if I didn't play it every set. I mean, you know, the, 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 the people... <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I'm going to play it. Don't worry, but I'm not going to play it like the third record I play. You're going to yeah. have to wait for it, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, one of these. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I tend not to overthink shit, you know. I just think, well, yeah, it's, it's a good record. It still works. People love it. Yeah. So I play it, you know, and it was it was a bit of a happy accident, really. It was never – that one wasn't really uh, really premeditated. It was just a, a thing that threw together just before Winter Music Conference, the night before, and literally finished it off on the plane on the way there, playing it like, fuck me, this really works. And yeah. then the rest was history. Did it change your career, though? Um, uh, I think it did in terms of it, you know, to get to the, the next level, you've got to be talking to the general public, you yeah. know, um, we write a lot of records that talk to an internal community that, 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 that garner a lot of respect from our peers and people we're associated with yeah. to get to that next level. You've got to have one of those records that really talks to them, the masses, that people that know you that, that you know might listen to house music on on the way to the mm. school run and go oh I love that one do you yeah. know what I mean and that's that that's there you, you you know to to get to the next level you need one of those in your career and I think that that was one of those in my career I mean it was a shame it was just at the birth of the kind of digital revolution it, you know if it was um if it was around when Spotify was uh, uh, around, it would be a whole different story. But um, yeah, it well, it did. It did inadvertently change my career. You know, it was a it was a record that that reached far further than mm. just a DJ record. How was the whole Laurent Garnier thing? Really cool, man. I mean, yeah. I just did it and said, "Look, I mean, we've done this. Are you cool with it?" He's like, "Yeah, man, do it." Legend. Oh, I just, literally just phoned him. He was that down to never met him. Yeah, never ever met him. Ever. What still? Still, really, to this, day, to this day, I kid you not, never cross paths. Um, you should probably get in the studio and do something, in all fairness. Um, that might not be a bad thing to do next year. Let me just write <laughs> quick idea uh, for tour 20. That's actually a really good idea. Heard it first on the Will, Cl- <coughs> Will Clark podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we'll do that actually. Why not? That's a really good shout. Um, he's he's also like, I've not met him, but I've I've, had, met him, I, I've had like emails with him and he's legitimately like one of the most down to earth people like he responds to everybody yeah and that's what that that was the kind of tonality of it, it was like yeah man do it yeah just do the publishing I was like oh of course you, just, you know you wrote it so it's just my, our interpretation of it i mean yeah, it, it was just, it was already, it had all the right bits. It was just not, you know, it just didn't have a club sensibility. We just fashioned it into something that made sense, really, and just kind of took the noodle out of it a little bit and just gave it a bit more, a bit more welly. Dance for friendly. And, yeah. and yeah, the rest was history. Love it. Love it, man. Um, I'm Van Helden, your most recent yep. record. What's that? What's that like? Armin's obviously a legend, but you've known him for years, probably. And. Well, do you know what? No, again, someone I'd never crossed paths with. And I, I did a festival with him. We, we were just, I said, look, man, we've got to do something. We should yeah. do something. It, it, we're, it's in the, you know, it's in the script, surely. And um, we stayed in contact. And uh, I was in the States uh, doing two weekends. And normally, I would, you know, if I did two weekends, I'd still come home in the week yeah. and go 
back out again. And I, I said, look, I'm over for two weeks. Why don't I nip down to Miami? Let's get in the studio. Let's do some music and just, you know, hang out. Yeah. So I did. And um, we spent the first night um, just just chatting, really. We went for dinner and we're pretty much the same age. And um, we come from a pretty much identical musical background in terms of boogie and disco mm. and soul from yeah. the 80s and hip hop. You know, we grew up going through all the same things, the same movement uh, and, you know, as kids. And we knew all all the reference points musically were, were the same. And he's got this incredible collection of videos. Mm-hmm. He does these, these VJ sets where he'll play like really obscure, like 80s boogie records, like Dutch boogie records and and stuff, you know. And, and I'm all over that. I'm, that's where I come from. I'm, I'm probably still stuck in 1986, in all fairness. I've never kind of musically moved on. Most of the things I listen to outside electronic music is stuff from the 80s. Mm-hmm. So I am literally stuck there. Um, you know, I just think yeah, I'm, I'm a proper soul boy. Um, and it was just such an incredible time. And there's still so much incredible music I'm still unearthing and discovering. Mm-hmm. And that's just still sounds so relevant. And um, we just spent, we went, we went for dinner, went back to his and then, um, He's got this big projector on the wall, and we were almost having like a sound clash. He's like, "Do you remember this one?" I was like, "Ah, oh, do you remember this one?" <laughs> and then it, this went on, and we're having a few beers, and we ended up landing on on the TJM thing, and we're like, "Let's do this, mm. let's do this." And then it was like, "Yeah, man, let's do it." So it had a very kind of organic um, inception in, in as far as that we both. You know, we were on the vibe before we'd even switch the computer on. It was like, let's get the idea right and warm. You know, when you do a collaboration, it's like sometimes you go in there, it can be a bit, a bit awkward. Awkward. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, how much do I put in? How much do I not put in? Yeah. You know, where's the line there? Well, we'd spent the whole night not on the computer, just like talking about records. And we we're both mad passionate about this. Like, right. Yeah, man, let's just do this. This would be a no brainer. And then pff, within four hours, it was done. Done. You know, we, we, you know, the idea was we'd already landed on the idea, talked it through in our heads, and we just went in the next day. We actually wrote, written four records. Oh, really? Um, yeah, we banged out loads of stuff that week because it was just easy. It just felt very natural. Mm. Again, we, it felt like, you know, when I used to work with Martin, we both come from exactly the same place musically. Yeah. So, you know, we were on the same page and um, he's such a nice guy, man. He's mm. so cool. He's so down to earth. He's just so in his own lane. He doesn't give fuck about what's going on he's just yeah. like right this is what i am this is what i do like it or lump it and i love that attitude and we we kind of we, you know it we we connected on on so many levels and um yeah we've done some great music and that's the first of uh, of four to come out yeah it's um he's he's also at that level where i think it's it must be strange actually because i think now like we know who he is and what he's achieved but i also think there's like a, a very interesting younger generation coming through the industry and by saying that makes us sound super old but we're actually not old generally um but that actually don't know the heritage of house music and i think it's making a really interesting time for for records because they're discovering old records again they're discovering old records and yeah. it's really fucking interesting because now there's like an insurgence of like old records coming back and no one's heard of them yeah and well, uh, what's yeah, your th- really what, what's your thoughts on that because there's like mixed there's mixed emotions where there's yeah. like remakes of old records coming out and everyone's like fucking hell we've heard this about a million times but the kids haven't well, it, 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 and, uh, it's, and it's so it, it's so mad you say that. I mean, it, I think the, I'm going to play this video. I'm going to find it on my phone. My um, my son, one of his friends, he's only he's 15, Elliot, yeah. and he's just started DJing. And he did um, he did his first gig. And let me play this. I'm play this to you. Hang on. He played a Duck Sauce record, right? Yeah. The, now, right, these kids are 15. Mm. And look, they, look, where is it? Oh, I've got to find it. It's going to, if it kills me. Um, was it Big Bad Wolf? No, it's um, time after time. Ah, okay, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, where is it? I've got to show it to you. I've got to find it. And the kids go absolutely plays it. 
and the kids go nuts. I'm like, that's mad. Yeah. You know, you were about four when this record yeah. came out. <laughs> how are you, how do you, oh, I can't find it now. I'll send it to you, I'm sure yeah, it'll be in there. Do. I'll put it in the podcast. We'll, we'll put it in at the end. Of it. Um, and these kids go up and nuts. And it's like, wow, you, you know, great. And that just, that's testament to music. Good music stands the test of time, you know, and it's mm-hmm. great that, there's a whole new generation finding it and having fun with it. Um, so it's, it, it's great. And it's good that people are like with the LF system, you know, getting down to real quality music, you yeah. know, that that's, that's just music to my ears. The fact that a record like that can have that much success and it isn't crap and it's, yeah. it's brilliant and it's clever and it's, it's well produced. Uh, that's what I love like, about the UK though. I think I I honestly don't think there's any other country in the world and I could be biased but I don't think there's any other country in the world that allows quality dance music in their charts. I think, you know, again without saying bias, the UK is um the kind of global catalyst for everything in youth culture. Yeah. You know, if it happens for it happens first in London or yeah. the UK and then spreads from here. Um, so we're very fortunate to live in a place that's that progressive and forward thinking. Mm. And, um, you know, has, has, you know, if it wasn't for what happened, we did, you know, did in the late eighties with electronic music, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation yeah. now, you know? So, you know, we, we are very fortunate to live in a, in, in a place where with this much creativity and this much acceptance for that. Yeah. You get that, you know, the, there are places in the world that that you know the things we take for absolute granted, you know, music, from yeah. you know, um, let alone the nuances of putting out something so fucking soulful and cool that we just accept. So we are very, very fortunate. But it is an incredible place, incredible place to 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 live and be inspired by because there's so many people constantly um pushing the boundaries in the envelope of what we're doing and it's you know and that inspires you to 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 dig deep and constantly evolve yourself as an artist so um you know you sometimes take that over granted but yeah i think i think also there's so many avenues to to just be heard in the uk compared to other countries with with the with radio as well oh for sure absolutely yeah there really are you know and people just create their own avenues here you know yeah. people just and that's what i love about it. it's like right let's just do this and and the next thing it's, it's a thing it's club um, nights as well like the amount of club nights maybe not now after covid but pre-covid I, like yes there were so many fucking club nights and it would just be like a bunch of dudes or girls and just like we're like fuck it we just want to throw a party and then know. and then these parties turn into the biggest parties in the city yeah and, it's, and that works yeah. and that that's the great you know that is the, the great thing about electronic music it still has that very organic um feel to it and 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 long may that continue you know mm-hmm. i think a lot it's the same in any, any industry you know it, it always suffers from its own success when it becomes corporate and sterile but there's still enough cutting edge in especially in the uk yeah where people are prepared to take it in their own hands and just evolve this scene and constantly keep it vibey and fresh. So, and you forget that because you're just living it all the time. You just take it for granted. But um, yeah, it's a very cool place to be. I live in, I live in London and it's, I know I've, there's nowhere else I'd, I'd want to live because I'm constantly inspired by my surroundings and yeah. the energy that he creates. Yeah. We're, we're, we're super lucky in the UK compared to a lot, lot of places. Um, 20 years of tour room. When do you turn around and be like, it's enough? Well, in any great story, there's a start, middle and end. Exactly. Um, you need to script that. Um, obviously, you know, you're abreast and aware of it. And the moment there's, there's no, mm. there's no rationale to suggest finishing it. I enjoy it too much as you can probably hear the passion in, in, in how I speak about it. But in every great story, that there needs to be that, and that's mm. that smart, you know. And of course, there will be an exit strategy, and that's that, that's something that that will be appropriate at the right time. Um, as and when that is, yeah, I probably couldn't divulge it. But you know, I think you need to be smart. You need to think. You know, you have to think that way. We've always 
again, we've always planned, we've always had a script, we've always had a, a, a one-year strategy, a five-year strategy. We're always, you know, I, I, I can't operate without having that in place, knowing where I'm going. You know, I can't have, there needs to be a finish line. There needs to be yeah. a measure of success uh, and strategy. And I, I, I feel comfortable when I'm in that. Yeah. So there is there is obviously plans afoot now, but at the moment we're enjoying a really incredible time where we're at. Twenty years, we're going to a lot of celebrating of that in a kind of fresh way. Maybe Tourum two point zero, not Tourum twenty. You know, mm. and we want to. There's you know, there's no. It's not mega cool being being old in in, in youth culture, um, but if we can make it feel like it's the start of the next chapter, then that's maybe the way we'll approach it. Um, but um, yeah, no, no immediate plans. But we're having too much fun with it right now. I love that. I love that. Um, we've just done an hour, and I feel like we could keep going on forever. Um, but I kind of want to wrap it up a little bit. I want to talk about what you got coming up on the fu- in the future. Um, you talk about your like f- two year, five year, ten year plan. Where are you at? in life not just tool room but just life in your plans to where you're at in your career well i i guess the next big aspiration for me yeah, and then something i like I, I touched on i am mad keen on football as i'm obsessed with football and my son as well he really not I, I never wanted to be a professional footballer. I didn't really. I, music was never a career when I was a kid. Let alone the yeah. DJing wasn't even a thing. It mm-hmm. just, you know, when I left school in 1988, it wasn't. It wasn't a thing. What didn't it, it didn't exist? We we kind of made it up. Yeah. Um, and I was just wanting to be a footballer. That, but maybe it wasn't quite good enough to get there. Um, and then electronic music blew up. I'm like, oh, this is quite good. You know, I'm not getting fifty pound a week to play football. I'm getting two hundred pound. For two hours, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's of this, and there's loads of women here and loads of drugs. In fact, so I'm going to stay here. Um, so, uh, I now want to fuse the two passions in my life um, and, and and do something in football um, on, on a very small scale. Just started a new football club. How oh, cool! Academy FC, um, just because I didn't have enough things going on, I thought I'd just start a football club. Um, <laughs> And it, it's my real passion at the moment. And what I want to try and do is is do something very interesting um, and do what we're doing in the academy, but do it in sports. So you have a youth brand that is, you know, really talking to talking to you on, on in in a language that, that, that means something where music and sport generally tend to be the, the, the two big things in youth culture. Yeah. So I want to fuse the two things, have a record label that's got a, 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 a sports academy um, with but at the same time doing events in New York on Saturday night and yeah. you know, Tokyo and it'd be, okay, let, let me explain it like this. Let's say Nike started a record label. Who wouldn't want to be signed to Nike? Exactly. Yeah. So I want to reverse it the other way around. I want to start a sports academy, but do it in a way that is vibrant and young feeling and that talks to kids in a way that that is, is is cultural uh, as much as it is in sport. So that's something I'm I'm kind of beavering away on in the background. That that's 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 the, I guess the last thing I really want to box off is to do that. You know, we st- we did a start sport. academy music. Can we start one in sport? You know, then mm. I think if I do that, I will die a very happy man. No, that's dope. I think the 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 one brand that kind of came to mind for me when you were talking about that was Red Bull and how yeah. They've kind of created. I know Red Bull Music Academy doesn't happen anymore, um, but what they created culturally was really interesting and special for for the scene. Exactly. Yeah, I think they're the only brand that have done that. They've managed to harness all the things that are exciting about youth culture, and I, you know, I'd like to do the same. You know, mm. to do something that's. That's maybe something, you know, if my son doesn't make it as a footballer, something for him to, to continue to with, on. you know, or, and keeping the family. But something I just want to get out of my system, something that, you know, will make me feel complete as as a human being. So I guess, you know, I, I, of course, you've got all, you know, lo- loads of music coming out. That goes without saying, you know, that's been, again, that's been the backbone of my success is just making a constant amount of output you know there's never a dip in that so there's always loads of music that's a given um but in terms of aspirations hey 
spending the right amount of time with my friends and my family that's sacrosanct you know that um that's at the top of the list doing all the things i want to do in music but that you know this whole kind of sports academy thing is something i really want to get my teeth into and i'm beavering away in the background i'm excited to see what comes of that well you can check us out at a very junior level we've got tour academy fc go on our instagram page and see what the kids are up to so that's it that's dope that's dope man um a question I've been asking at the end of each podcast is not really music related, um, but it's if you could give somebody a piece of advice right now, what would that be? Um, never give up. On, on, and I, I don't want to sound cliche. I don't want to say in the least cliche way. I mean, how do I say it? it? It's you can be anything you want to be. You can, you know, that only you will stop you from being whatever you want to achieve in life. You'll set your own parameters. You'll set your own. No one else will. No one will turn and say, ah, now, Mark, so I know you want to be a, a superstar DJ, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. No one is going to say that but yourself. Yeah. Now, if you're prepared to put in the work, and you, uh, then you can go and achieve anything. And that's something I say to my son on, on a daily basis. You know, he's hell-bent on being a footballer. I'm like, well, you'll write your own script. Do you want to be a professional footballer? You'll be one. Only you will stop you from being it. If you're prepared to get in the back garden every night and do one more hour than everyone else, yeah. then you win. If you don't, you won't. And it's as simple as that. So you set, you will set your own... Um, parameters uh, and and aspirations in life so go for it you've got one crack at it get out there and be the best that you can be and live you know your wildest dreams why not amazing dude thanks so much for coming on i really appreciate it thanks for having me mate uh, this, really enjoying it. i'm sure i see you on the road at some point somewhere in uh, in the next uh, year. yeah an airport somewhere across the globe <laughs> Keep safe. Say hi to the rest of the crew. Um, oh, and thanks so much, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Will. Cheers, Cheers dude. man. Thank you. Take care, mate. Cheers, mate. And that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed it. I love that one. Um, please hit subscribe. Please go send it to your friends. Keep safe. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>